Forget Ron John Virgin. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to the Stony Creek United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Michael. I'm happy to see you all here on our Christmas Eve evening service. Um, got a lot of fun things in store, uh, including a guest who will be joining us at the end of the service. More on that later. Um, do we have any announcements? Anything going once, twice? All right, perfect. Well, I am going to invite um, our family to come up for the Advent uh, reflection, which you can find attached to your bulletin. If you would please follow along uh, with that part. Your part are the bolded parts. Okay. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. We give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be the fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The images of violence and destruction in the world are often before our eyes and in our minds. It seems that nothing changes as the years pass. And then we hear the words of the prophet Isaiah, who shows a radical different path to liberation, peace, love, and justice. What hope he brings. Through the birth of this tiny boy child, the world will be renewed and violence and oppression will be overcome. God gives up power to become a helpless child. Hope comes with the mighty vision of the end of violence and oppression through the birth of this tiny human being. The life of the world in the hands of a newborn baby, unbelievable, too radical. We struggle with this message. And yet the prophet says, the world cannot be changed by power and might, but through a helpless baby, innocent and vulnerable. God, help us to make this dream our dream every day. Let us be bearers of the hope this child brings in the way we live and act. A child is born tonight to make all the difference. A child is born tonight for the peace of God. A child is born tonight for the light of the world. Let's celebrate Christmas, God's all-embracing love in a baby born for us. Rejoice always. The light is coming.
And the word became flesh and and lived among us. And we have seen his glory. Full of grace and truth. Please join me aloud in our opening prayer. Wondrous God, we praise you and bless you for the gift of your only begotten Son, the true light who enlightens everyone that has come into the world. May all who receive him and believe in his name be born anew as beloved children of your redeeming purpose. In Christ's name we pray, amen. If you would rise as you are able for our hymn number 238, Angels We Have Heard on High.
Please be seated. With grateful hearts for the gift of our Savior, let us bring our gifts to God. Would please rise as you are able and join in our doxology hymn number 95 in the hymnal. O majesty on high, whom angels worship in thanksgiving for your Son, bless these gifts we offer, that they may bring light to the darkened corners of our world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. If you would remain standing as you are able for our next hymn number 234, O come all ye faithful.
You may be seated. If you would please join me in an attitude of prayer. Eternal God, in the midst of strife and warfare, may your peace be known throughout the world. As your church announces the good news of salvation, may we share the gift of Christ in prayer and in action. In sickness, suffering, and need, may your healing love dispel all darkness. As all creation shouts with joy, may we care for earth, sea, and sky in reverence of you. In all of our beginnings and in our endings, may be way may we be one with you eternally. Through Christ, with Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, we praise you, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with confidence of children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to remain seated for our next hymn, number 217, Away in a Manger. please join me aloud in our prayer for illumination. Loving God, before time and space, your living word was with you, creating all things. In the fullness of time, he came to bring peace and to show us how to love. By the anointing of your Holy Spirit, inspire us to share his light wherever we go as we carry your good news of salvation to the ends of the earth. Amen. Our first scripture reading for this evening can be found on page 1184 in the Bibles in the pews. We are in the first chapter of the book of Hebrews, looking at verses 1 through 12. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophet at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom also he made the universe. The son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. 
after he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, today I have become your father? Or again, I will be his father and he will be my son. And again, when God brings his firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. In speaking of the angels, he says, he makes his angels spirits and his servants flames of fire. But about the sun, he says, your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. He also says, in the beginning, Lord, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. They will all wear out like a garment. You will roll them up like a robe. Like a garment, they will be changed. But you remain the same, and your years will never end. This is the word of God for the people of God. Our second scripture reading for this evening comes in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 14, which you can find on page 1047. This section of text carries the header, The Word Became Flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. 
He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the word of God for the people of God. If you would please join me once again in an attitude of prayer. God that is beyond our full comprehension, God that never gives up on us, God that forgives and yearns for reconciliation with humanity, you took action to being about our redemption by becoming flesh and bone, fully human and divine, and lived among your children. You experienced joy and sadness, pain and happiness, anger and peace. Every emotion and feeling we will ever know as humans. And all because you wanted us to find our way back to your loving arms, your grace-filled hands, your heart filled with unconditional love. Your love truly knows no bounds, no limits, no restrictions, and you bless us with your grace. And now may the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts together in this place be pleasing in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, here we are again. It's Christmas Eve 2023. Time really does seem to fly sometimes. It was just a year ago that we had to make the difficult decision to cancel our Christmas Eve worship service due to the inclement weather and the need to try and keep everyone safe. How much difference a year makes. And look how different this Christmas Eve is compared to last year, if nothing else in terms of the weather. But there have been many changes that have come about. There are faces that we no longer see among us, faces we miss dearly and would give almost anything to have back. Also some new faces though too, and faces that make us smile and bring joy to our lives. This liturgical year is an odd one every time that it comes around because the scripture readings, they don't make any mention of the birth of Jesus. Where is the manger scene with the little beautiful baby swaddled in cloths, asleep in his mother's arms? What do readings from the book of Hebrews and the Gospel of John that doesn't include a birth narrative, what does any of this have to do with Christmas Eve? I don't know if you could make a Christmas pageant from these two readings, or probably at least not one that most people would recognize. So why then, Pastor, have you chosen to stay with the liturgical readings for this year and simply not toss them aside in favor of the traditional reading from the Gospel of Luke that gives us the story of the birth of Jesus? Well, it's for a couple reasons, really. First, using the selected readings helps hold our Advent and Christmas sermon series together really nicely. It's kind of a selfish reason. I'll, I'll own it. Second, though, I think, I think it probably happens even more than some of us realize that many people have never heard these passages 
on Christmas Eve. So they never get to encounter them in the setting of the holiday season, in the setting of this story. And I admit that I do like to try and and challenge you all from time to time, hopefully never beyond what you are able to handle. But I also think it is important to engage with as much scripture as we can and not just focus and spend time on the familiar parts or the sections that we're partial to for various reasons. And hey, if nothing else, when you spend some time with family and friends in the coming days, you can compare notes with what their pastors preached on and then brag or lament that your pastor stuck with the Gospel of John. And I say brag or lament because some people feel they really need to hear the birth narrative from Luke for it to really feel like Christmas Eve. I do ask that you give me the opportunity, though, to connect this all in a meaningful way. And if nothing else, we're still going to end the service singing Silent Night with our candles, so there's that. I want you to think about something for a moment with me. How could God, the Word that was in the beginning, take on our flesh and bone? And for that matter, and maybe a better question would really be, why would God ever, ever want to? I mean, God's been able to see what a hot mess humanity can be and usually is. Why would God want to go and get even more mixed up in all of that more than God already has? Personally, I find the beginning of John's gospel to be rather beautiful, even rather poetic in its own right. But at the same time, well, it, sometimes it just doesn't seem to make sense. Why would the word that was in the beginning before all creation want to be in our messy and broken existence? The fact of the matter is we may never get an answer to that question anytime soon. All that we do know is that it happened. God set aside the distance of the heavens in order to be so close, to be so near, and to make a home with us, whom God created, loves, and saves. God became human, just like you and me, as awesome and incredible and even confusing as that may seem. Jesus, the Son of God, being birthed into the world, is often depicted on a lot of Christmas cards. Think about all the Christmas cards you've received, not just this year, but over the years, and how many have the the beautiful manger scene like we have here, or even just Mary holding little baby Jesus in her arms with Joseph looking over her shoulder at this beautiful miracle that she's embracing. And not that there's anything wrong with Christmas cards, don't misunderstand me, But the truth is, the pictures on those cards, they just, they don't tell the fullness of the story. Cards often tend to be censored and kind of sterile. Again, nothing wrong with that. It just, it feels like there's at least something amiss. Those cards don't recognize the reality of Christ coming among us by being born into this world. Could you imagine what those cards might look like and depict if they did? Have you ever seen a Christmas card with Mary and Joseph holding the baby Jesus covered in dirt and grit and filth? I haven't seen one yet, but maybe that's a new line for Hallmark next year. But but maybe it's because the cards have these sterile images of glowing halos and well-behaved farm animals, a quiet, sleeping, and peaceful baby, and a couple of calm parents. Really? Does any woman in this room think that's how it went? Mary in the throes of labor with her husband trying to get them shelter in a manger surrounded by animals. 
What do you think that really looked like? Be honest, I know many of you and I've started to learn how your minds and imaginations work. If we want to talk about the reality of God taking on human flesh in Jesus and, and how we're told that God entered this world, well then the censored Christmas card is just not telling the whole story or our story for that matter. The reality of life, well, reality at least as we know it and perceive it, it's filled with, with muck. There's highs and lows, joys, sorrows, triumphs and failures. Messy and sometimes more uncensored than we care to admit or can bear if we're honest about it all. In the midst of an uncensored reality, God took on our nature, took on human form, and came into a very real, very broken, and also beautiful world. The word made flesh came to truly make our stories and God's story come together, become close and relational and, and passionate and full of feeling. All of that because we are still in that season of illumination, that shine of Christ's birth with beautiful glowing light that brings warmth and radiance shining through everything that is messy and dirty and broken and foul. I recently came across a post on social media that I wish I had printed out because I don't know if I'll be able to do it justice, but I'll do my best. Essentially relating the reality of what that time looked like and essentially equating Mary's response to all that's going around her and saying something along the lines of after giving birth, after we don't know how long in labor, amongst a room full of animals and various people maybe coming in and out, who thought it was a good idea to let a little boy come in with a drum and beat on it? This Christmas Eve, I want us to remember that the Word made flesh that came to live among us, that matters. I want us to remember the Word made flesh that came to be with us. To remember the Word made flesh that came to live our experiences. God didn't just come and hang out on the peripheral. There are moments in scripture we, we tend to gravitate towards the ones where it talks about Jesus letting the little children come to him and they sit in his lap and it's all really beautiful and peaceful, but Jesus was fully human and divine. There are scriptures that back that up with Jesus flipping tables in the temple, Jesus cursing a fig tree, causing it to die because it didn't have any fruit. He was basically hangry. This is a gospel of, of embodiment, not just mere words, but the word. The word that became flesh, the word that dwelt among humanity. The word that experienced the human condition, lived the human story, felt human emotion. Only a God of love, a God of forgiveness, a God of reconciliation and redemption would ever make the choice to become flesh and bone, to embrace God's own creation in a way that was never before seen. Tonight, as you go about the rest of your celebrations and in the coming days, I hope that you can carry the spirit of Christmas with you, that you will always know the love and grace of God that surrounds you in all your life, that you remember that you are a beloved child of God made in the image of God and therefore are beautiful just the way you are. This time of year, the season of anticipation of Advent, we anticipate the coming of our Lord and Savior and tonight we celebrate that. I pray that that joy 
will follow you all the days of the coming year and beyond. Amen. For the remainder of our service, I'd like to just give a couple directions. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to rise, and I will give our benediction, and then we will move to our closing hymn, Silent Night, Holy Night. Um, At that time, the lights will dim, and you can take your candles and... uh, turn them on. Um, If you need help, look for someone near you who has strong hands. Um, During the end of Silent Night, a special guest will be joining us and will come forward and be kneeling along the altar. And I have been instructed to invite any of our children who would like to join our guest at that time to also come forward and kneel at the altar. At the conclusion of the song, The lights will come back up and we can share our Christmas greetings with one another. If you would please rise as you are able. Beloved children of God, siblings in Christ Jesus, when you leave this place, go in peace to bring comfort and healing and to announce good news in the name of Christ. May the blessings of God, the one who creates, redeems, and sustains us eternally, be with you now and always. Amen. You may now light your lights.
Christmas. Merry Christmas.